Next one, let's talking about weights and being a bigger person. We've got this insane article here, courtesy of Scary Mummy. Um, and um, I don't know, at first I laughed at this and I was really, you know, it really made me belly laugh and the ridiculousness of life and people's, you know, unbridled need for attention, all this malarkey. But then I kind of felt a bit sad. So it says, courtesy of Scary Mummy, it says, Test Daily reveals she's in recovery for anorexia. Uh, I repeat that again. Test Daily reveals she's in recovery for anorexia. This woman here says she's anorexic. Do you know how insane that is when you just look at the picture and you look at the words? Like, what? Anyway, it continues. Um, it says, Test Daily recently revealed on Twitter, which is where you reveal all things, right? Um, you reveal your deepest, darkest secrets to strangers on Twitter. It says, Test Daily recently revealed on Twitter that she's anorexic and in recovery, opening up on Instagram about her experiences with an eating disorder. Model Test Daily is frequently open with fans on social media about her struggles with mental health, along with using a platform to discuss her relationship with body image and body positivity. This whole platform as well thing is really annoying. I hate this whole like platform, um, you know, uh, having to get your facts right with everything you're speaking about. This is a, for instance, for me, this is a podcast where I just basically shoot off the hip about stuff that I've seen online that I think is interesting. And then I share it with you guys. And obviously if you share it with you guys and you guys resonate with it, I'm super happy. But you don't come on here to listen to my thoughts and opinions of stuff because I am a bastion of fact checking and, you know, getting out the right narrative and stuff. You're just hearing one guy's interpretation of the world events. You might disagree completely with what I have to say, but that's the beauty of listening to a podcast. You want to hear what that person's perspective is on something that you've maybe seen or haven't seen. And to somehow think that it's a platform for change is insane. Like, what is test daily or test daily test holiday or any person that's got a quote-unquote platform really done for society at large most of it is self-serving because it's your platform it doesn't help anybody else but there's this idea that your platform should be used to do this it's like what what is wrong with these people anyway continue that the fact of issues also shuts down unsolicited and unnecessary commentary about her health and appearance which is odd because she's meant to be a plus-size model but she doesn't want you to have any unsolicited opinions on her looks uh, but the mum of two just got more candid than ever, revealing that she is in recovery from eating disorder, reminding internet trolls and body shamers that people of all sizes can struggle with their disorder eating and that it's never okay to comment on someone's weight or perceived health. Do you know how insane that is? Like, there's so many insane triggers. So, you're, so from what I've seen of her, she's a fat activist, but she's also got that kind of modeling influencer thing going on because there's a lot of pictures of her in lingerie and cool outfits and shit on her Instagram feed. So I'm going to assume most of those feeds are ads, right? If they're not, then I apologize, but I assume they are ads. So in some way, shape or form, she's been hired as an influencer, like modeling wise, right? So she's an IG model, but I'm just going to say models, not to be derogatory, right? It's, models are models. So she gets paid to put clothes on and advertise them on Instagram which is essentially opening yourself up to people to comment on what you look like, but you're not allowed to do that. Then she's in recovery for an eating disorder that usually only afflicts people when they're really skinny, right? Usually, you know, when you think of anorexia, you think of somebody with an eating disorder who's unable to keep food in their bodies and are purposely eating away or not eating away in order to kind of vomit or eating away or not eating in a way in order to kind of keep a particular you know frame and size because in their head they feel like that that's that's how they look the best there's that girl on youtube who's kind of famous for it right who people try and help all the time but she's basically adamant that no in my head this actually makes complete sense and people have kind of left uh, to her own devices for now and until she needs help or until she reaches out people should then go and help her but for now leave her to do her thing so usually when you think of her actually you think of very very rakey thing people who look you know sickly thick you see their rib cage popping out from the side of their body just like not, not, not something really pleasing to see to the eye but you know everyone kind of has to go through their own journey and you're hoping they come out of it from the other side so she wants to be an inter a fair activist a model but you don't have to comment on what she looks like. And she wants to have an eating disorder. But you're also not allowed to comment on that. What? It continues. Holidays first took to Twitter last Friday, April 30th, to address the speculation about her weight. She wrote, to everyone that keeps saying, oh, it's sweet here. And to everyone that keeps saying, you're looking really healthy or you're losing a lot of weight, keep it up. Don't comment on my weight or perceived help keep it to yourself thanks i'm surprised she didn't do any claps in between there's a very particular way people are that talk on the internet and they usually that's the thing though isn't it? i feel a bit sad for because i think people that have this sort of warped perception of the world or of themselves 
um, or of their place in society, um, there's usually no turning this around, right? This is just the way somebody is. It's, it's very rare that someone that does this sort of like clapping emoji thing and speaks in that sort of cadence or has this weird idea that you're um, somehow, you know, words are violence. And if you're telling her that she's looking amazing because she did 10 burpees as encouragement is somehow a triggering offense. There's nothing that can really, you know, um, bring this woman into a more, what's that, rational there's nothing that could just make this woman suddenly realize that she's being a little bit wild in the morning, right? She's never going to come around. That's just how she is, which is a, which is sad when you think about the good that she could do overall, you know, with, with her platform being the size that she is and being where she's come from legitimately. But hey, it continues. Healing from my eating disorder and everyone is out here thinking it's okay to comment on my weight loss. Jesus Christ. Um, the next day she followed it with a tweet saying i'm in recovery and recovering i'm not ashamed to say out loud anymore i'm a result of a culture that celebrates fitness and equates that to worth but i get to write my own narrative now i'm finally able to care for the body that i've punished my entire life i'm finally free i don't know man i really don't know if you're finally free and i don't know like part of me wants to laugh at this sort of stuff but i do have a lot of sympathy for people like this because i was a bigger dude right at my at my biggest i was like 200 and what 70 pounds or something which is what 17 stone which is massive considering i'm only six foot that's really really big and i never really viewed myself as huge at the time right i kind of kind of gave myself this weird idea that i was just big boned and i was stocky but obviously when i started getting into wearing really nice clothes and started going into shops and wanting to dress a certain way i quickly realized that my shape just was too big in general forget sample sizes for whatever range they had in the store from smallest to the largest i couldn't fit in any of it and it kind of made me think you know what i kind of want to wear these clothes they're not going to change them to make me feel comfortable so i'd rather um you know go on a diet work out and get to a point where i can fit in the clothes to you know to my shape then demand the world to change for my inability to you know keep a donut out of my mouth for instance so i have sympathy for people like this i really do i i, I should be laughing but i have sympathy for it but also i think it's insane to be a fat activist and to somehow say that people can't comment on your weight when specifically what you're selling is your weight you're selling the idea that you should be comfortable at any size right you should feel empowered you should feel like you are not less than if you're that bigger size which i agree with and the irony is i think she mentioned in that post right that um what does it says here she mentioned here uh the the um and the result of a culture that celebrates fitness and equates that to worth the irony of it is is that the people that have done that that have equated fitness to worth are other women that's why i always say the enemy of all women is actually other women not men really is the truth men women are the real enemy of women because fashion magazines have kind of perpetuated this idea that for some reason if you're a woman and you're over the age of 26 that you're essentially expired most fashion advertisements contain people that probably can't afford the brands that they're wearing anyway and they will happen to be under the age of 21 um everyone's sample size um the fact that they kind of deem a woman that looks kind of like every other woman on the street as a what's the thing called uh, a plus size model is derogatory in the extreme and kind of you know other and it kind of otherizes you from a cast of from a cast of models it kind of makes you the kind of black sheep when you're the, known as a plus size model when in fact when in fact you know that's just what regular women look like on the street and um, day to day they don't usually all look like you know Gigi Hadid for instance so it's really interesting that we're now in a position where there's a segment of women who have now tried to reclaim their body shape and size but they're still being kind of held back and pushed back by kind of structures that have been built by people of their gender right from years gone by decades gone by they've kind of established this world where you know because if you think about other dudes yes there are some dudes who you know are, are never going to hook up with a fat girl that's facts and i'm same with their dudes who are probably never gonna rock up with a ginger with a black girl everyone's got their preference but i think for the most part most dudes are fairly what's that word called most dudes uh most dudes criteria for the women that they'll be in a relationship with or sleep with 
it's fairly normal it's fairly low there's not the entry the bar of entry is fairly low when it comes to dudes i think most girls will probably notice especially if you've been cheated on and you've seen the other girl that they've cheated the person on with whether or not they're uglier than you or they just have a worse personality whatever it may be you realize that dudes don't really have money standards you know as long as you're a cool person and you're fairly funny and you're cool to hang out with and whatever it is they usually game so this idea that dudes are the ones that are pushing women to be a certain size in order to make them ideal mates is insane because I'd hazard a guess that if you took a pool of obese dudes and a pool of obese women, you'd probably have more women, there'd probably be more women who are in a long-term relationships than dudes that are down long-term relationships. It's just a matter of the fact. I don't know why, it just is. What can you do about it? Maybe it's because dudes when they're bigger usually get less confident than more confident, which is actually, you know, a counterbalance in terms of how they should be successful with the opposite sex. But regardless... I just feel sorry for people like this, man. I really do. Because really and truly, the change that Tess Holiday could affect if she actually did decide to get healthy and lose some weight so that she was in a position to, you know, look after her kids for a long term. You know, because obviously when you're that side, you just, you know, there's loads of, you know, implicit health uh issues that come up with it. It's just the name of the game, unfortunately. There's just no way to be that big and also healthy in the long term it just isn't possible maybe for a period of time cool but overall this is probably not going to increase your uh life it's probably not going to increase it's probably not going to increase your yeah, increase your life expectancy so that's the issue there um she could actually really really affect change that way and it doesn't mean she has to kind of turn into looking like kate moss no one's saying that but she lost some way and just decided hey this is what i'm happy with this is what's manageable to me this is what's going to allow me to be there for my kids and my family and the charities i've set up all this malarkey then that's cool but it's just this absolute denial that this is a probably advantageous way to go about life. It's just the one that's a bit sad about it. And then you get people like this. So she's got this troll guy here who said this, which is hilarious. But also, you know, it's just a constant. Imagine the constant barrage of, you know, uh, abuse that she must get online just in general when she kind of sticks her head out from the parapet. That also doesn't hurt either, uh, help either. So it says here, um, I think she posted what she posted and somebody tweeted and said, congrats on being in recovery about the anorexia thing. How much do your doctors want you to weigh and when you, when when your weight gets restored? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously kind of poking fun at her anorexia stuff and she had to reply back saying, why do people think this is okay to ask this stuff? Embarrassing and exhausting. And again, I, I shouldn't be laughing, but I have a lot of sympathy for people. It's because I was in that position too when you're big and you're just kind of a bit delusional. Um, you have to kind of have to create your own reality in order to kind of make real life um, easier to kind of function in. But in general, like the real hard truth of it is you just need some tough love. You do need a bit of fat shaming. You do need um, a health scare to kind of really get you into a position where you kind of decide enough is enough. Unfortunately, I don't know why humans need that. We need to reach the end of our line before we really decide um, we need to make a change. And usually those changes are for you. They're more, you know, um, they're more self-serving they're not really for other people in the main i think because you know usually if you feel better about yourself you're usually a better person to hang around with um it's just you know a byproduct of that so it's sad but hey i guess tess she's gonna do what she's gonna do in it